My name is Ken Nolan. I work for WellWorks. And today we're going to be talking about Dynagraph interpretation. When I moved out here to West Texas to start a new business, uh, one of the key things we were trying to teach was the use of downhole pump cards so you can, you'll can learn more about your wells so that you can increase production if it's there or reduce operating cost if it isn't. So it's a well, that's a way to make money either way for the oil industry. And Dynagraph interpretation was unknown out here in the early 70s. Uh, many times people ask me, well, what is a dynamometer card? What is it for? What's it do? Why should I use it in my business? And so we came up with uh, uh, just a dozen basic cards uh, we called Dynagraph downhole pump cards. Then we start out with measuring data at the surface and then Dr. Sam Gibbs came up with an algorithm in the 60s that would uh, take the surface data and, and, and model the rod string and determine what the downhole pump was doing from the surface measurements. Infer what was going on in the well at the pump. And that's where the action is. It's not at the surface. That's where it all starts. But the, what you really want to know is what the pump is doing. And that tells you a great deal. Now, what this little uh, sim, uh, dynagraph card that we're showing up here is trying to tell us it, in very brief way with what I mean is this a dozen cards, what's going on in the well. Now, there's just a uh, multitude of different dynamometer cards, kind of like fingerprint. We know it, none of us have the same fingerprint. And that's the way it is with dynamometer cards. But this will get you started on interpreting pump cards. The typical pump card is a rectangle. This being load and this being position. At the pump, you model the rod string with some surface measurements, determine what's going on at the well, and this is what's going on at the end of the rod string where the pump is. And when you see a full pump, you'll see a rectangular shape for a pump card. It picks up the fluid load, moves through the upstroke, lets the fluid load go, moves through the downstroke, and just keeps completing that cycle. And that displaces uh, the fluid from the well. That's a full pump. That's what you like to see. If you can keep the pump full, that's the, the name of the game, and get all there is to get down there at the bottom. The, the main thing in this business, what you like to do, regardless of what you see when you, you drive up to analyze a well, is how can I keep that pump full most of the time? You like to see this because it's the most efficient way to operate a well. Now, this second little picture here we have is a flowing well or a rod part or an inoperative pump. They all look the same. Oh, and another little thing I want to point out is that these cards, are, the bottom of the card is always below this zero line. This is load and this is position. And the, this load is below zero. You might ask, well, why is that the case? Well, that's caused by buoyancy on the rod string. In other words, that's why ships float. And so the rod string is buoyed up with a, what we refer to as a negative load or negative force and that means the card is going to be shifted a little bit below zero, depending on the buoyancy. So, okay, you don't have anything going on. You, this is fluid load here between these two lines, and that disappears. Well, it's a flowing well, it's a rod part, or it's an inoperative pump, and what do you have? You just have the rod string hanging in there if it's an inoperative pump or a deep rod part, so the card is below zero and you don't have a fluid load to get it above zero. Now here is uh, what we refer to as a full pump, but there's a bump on the top or on the bottom or both. Now that could be a bent barrel in the pump when the plunger moves through that bent spot. Uh, it would cause a loads to change, like you see this cross-hatched area here, and that could occur on the upstroke or the downstroke, or both. So that's a problem. That'll either destroy the pump, or maybe it'll just go away. The pump cleans up, 
it digests whatever the problem was maybe and and you continue to pump it so you you usually live with that operation or seeing that um, and hoping it'll go away now this is a, a problem when you you don't have long enough pump or you spaced it poorly you're hitting down that little tick there the plunger's coming down here and when it gets close to the bottom you see this low drop that's when the pump hits bottom bad bad thing this can be thousands of pounds can you imagine a, a pump with a, a, a pickup truck weighing 4,000 pounds hitting on that pump well it'll destroy it in short time because that these numbers can be thousands of pounds depending on how bad off you are in spacing and uh, this is the hitting up now that's bad too because if you hit up too hard that's not good for the pump for the same reason the hitting down is but it also may unseat the pump they're held to, don't, in their seating nipple by uh, a, a, a seating device held in by friction and if you hit up you'll just pull it out and so this is bad if you see both you've got too short a pump right it's hitting down hitting up so anyway that's just a mistake in the in spacing the pump and buying a long enough pump to start with. Now this this one here is fluid friction. Yeah. You notice uh, there's some cross hatched area here on top and bottom. The card is inside of that. Uh, you, you can recognize this if you look at cards long enough that this is uh, a velocity dependent term that, that uh, defines this. The faster you move it, the pump and the rod string, the higher the loads. And that's a velocity dependent thing like your car. The faster you move it, the more rain resistance you get. And on the downstroke, it's the same thing. And uh, the small tubing will cause this, the high volumes of the small tubing. Uh, sometimes we use pumps that are what we call bottle pumps. They're bigger than the uh, tubing. And, uh, and so they're the pump bore is larger than the tubing. It's pushing all that liquid up the, up the tubing around the rod string, and that'll cause a lot of fluid friction. Um, and this is not a good thing. It's uh, wasteful in energy. It shortens up the pump stroke. Uh, no good things about friction. No good things happen with friction. And we'll talk about that a little later with the other. Well, let's talk about it now because we're talking about friction. Here's another friction term. Uh, cross hatched area on the bottom and top. Uh, if you diagnose that card, you can kind of feel where to draw these dashed lines across here. But that's associated with drag friction, Coulomb friction along the rod string. Holes are not straight. We never drilled a straight hole yet, but it's getting worse. You know, now we're doing horizontals. Uh, we may uh, uh, have all kinds of reasons to uh, put our wells on one location. And then the direction of the drill away from that, well, anytime you do that, your hole's going to be crooked on purpose. And now you've got to move that rod string and pump with a crooked hole, and your rods what? Want to stay straight. And the more load you put on the rods, the straighter they want to be. And so the more the friction goes up. And it can be very, very uh, detrimental. Let's think of the things that can happen. Number one, they rub on the tubing. And that'll eventually wear the couplings on the rods out, or wears the tubing out, you have leaks. Uh, it shortens up the pump stroke. Uh, loads go up with the surface equipment, the rod loads, the gearbox loads, uh, everything loading-wise goes up. So the life of the system is shortened, and there's no good things about friction. None. Zero. You wish you didn't have it. You, f you fight that by putting uh, guides on the rods and all that uh, reduces the, the, the frictional effects of wire and live with it because you can't straighten the hole out. So what the industry uh, should strive to do is uh, drill wells with uh, fewer or less dog legs. Dog legs means uh, how much it, uh, the hole, hole deviates in degrees per 100 feet of depth. Or I guess it's a uh, measured depth. 
And that's, uh, that's what you don't like to see. And so this is the kind of, th friction is the enemy. There's no good things about it. Uh, if, and it distorts the pump card, so you, don't, you can't see things going on as well if it's something in addition to friction. That's another thing I want to make, I'll point out. All these different conditions here, you can have two or more con uh, existing simultaneously. And what they do is overlay. Like you can have uh, a, a lot of friction and uh, it could be a full pump and that's the way it would look, right? Or, here's a big one, you can have unanchored tubing, this is this one here, and you could have bad friction. Well, you notice the card's leaning this way with unanchored tubing, and the card's leaning this way with uh, friction, and they superimpose. So they, you put them both together, you kind of have a rectangular card, don't you? Anyhow, now, this one, gas interference. That's another enemy. Pump doesn't fill. Well, it'll fill with something, but not what you want it to fill with. You want it to fill with what? Oil and water. You'd like to fill it with all oil, but that's not the way God made the, the world. <laughs> so you're going to have to live that, with that salt water, produce, produce water along with the, with the oil. But when you have gas, and that's byproduct really, but it sells for something, so it's, it's a worthy thing to produce. But if you can't fill the pump because of gas and it doesn't separate from the, the liquids, then you're going to have what we call gas interference. So, okay, you may be filling partially with oil and water and the rest from here to here is gas. And you notice how it compresses on the downstroke, compresses that gas. Not a good thing. You want the pump to look, card look like that. It doesn't. It looks like this. Compressing gas. Now, if you don't have it spaced right, it'll lean this way. This one here is not quite spaced low enough to bottom. See how it should pick up the fluid load vertically? It's not. It's bending over a little, little gas expansion there. That has to do with pump spacing. But the bottom line is, this is restricting you from maximizing production from this well. So what, you're, what you want to do when you see that is come up with a method to of separating the gas down hole. And this is not a, something that we can go over with right now. It takes a, a, lot, of, a lot of time and detailed discussion. But yeah, that's an enemy to rod pumping. But think about it. Gas has value. So if you can solve this, make, uh, you can produce the well further down. You know, it's not pumped off. It's got a high pump intake pressure, high fluid level. So if you can Separate the gas, you'll make more gas, more oil, more water. So this, if you solve that enemy, you get a reward. That's a good thing. So uh, we have all kinds of t techniques to s separate gas. Wonderful subject to talk about. Okay, we already talked about this one briefly. This is unanchored tubing. If you don't anchor the tube in the car to lean to the right, why? Because when you pick up the fluid load off the, at the start of the upstroke, it's taking load off, the, off of the tubing string. And when you take load, thousands of pounds off of that tubing string that it had on it, you take that off, what's it going to do? Shorten. So it'll contract. That'll make the car lean. That's, right, that's tubing uh, contraction because it's shortening. And then when you get to the top and put the fluid load back on, what's it going to do? Elongate. And so you can see if you have, you want to anchor the tubing because you lose that part of the stroke right here. That's ineffective. So you want to, you want to fix that problem. And we put what we call tubing anchors in here to make it look like this. So you don't lose that stroke. And it's easy to diagnose if you have unanchored tubing. One of the things I want to point out in all of these cards we, what I'm talking about here is good measured surface data. If you can't start out with good data at the surface, with good dynamometer data, load and position and time and all this stuff you can measure, if you don't get that right, that's going to be wrong. Garbage in, garbage out. And now you can make mistakes in diagnosing.
very bad thing, very bad. The industry uh, is uh, continuing to try to improve on the surface data gathering equipment. And uh, right now it's kind of hurting. We need more people involved in, in uh, building the equipment to do a better job of gathering data so we can do a better job of diagnosing the well properly with downhole cards. Okay, did this one down here is a worn or split barrel. And this happens quite a bit because you're putting uh, pressure on that barrel and the plunger is moving up and down. And, and so the pressure is moving up and down in that barrel. And, and so it, 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 at times, especially with pumps that are anchored at the top, the barrel of the pump is below the seat nipple of the pump. Now you really got a problem because the pump can, it has to see all that ballooning effect from the stroking of the pump moving up and down. And well, the barrel can split for various reasons. And when you do, if it's, say, midway up in the barrel, you'll get the fluid load and you'll start moving upwards and all of a sudden, boom, you don't have it anymore. So something went wrong with that barrel, right? And then it just keep repeating itself like that. Then we have a fluid pound here. Oh, boy. We kind of like to see that because it tells you that the well is producing that capacity. You can't make any more out of it. You could turn it upside down and you couldn't make any more out of the well. That's a good feeling. I'm doing a good job of producing my well. But anytime you over displace a well, this is the amount of fluid that you produce, that the pump is actually displacing, but the stroke is that long. And so the plunger starts down, the pressure's low, bam. Not good. It's not as bad as hitting down, but it's not good. And it's inefficient. The efficiency of the overall pumping system, the pumping unit, the motor, the rod string, all that drops dramatically. And so, yeah, you're pumping the well at capacity, but it's costing you in other ways. Energy to produce that whatever you're producing and wear and tear on your equipment. Big thing. Big time. So what we do there is use pump off control. When it sees the well starting to pound, it shuts the well down. That's one way to control the well. And then wait a while, let the fluids accumulate, start it back up again. The other thing to do is slow it down. Now that's what I think the industry is eventually going to do, but it costs more money, and that's to use a variable frequency drive to drive the pumping unit. So when you see this condition here, you slow it down. And you, now the pump starts to fill, and you keep it almost full that way. You, you want to know it's pounding slightly. That's how you can still control the well, but you don't let it have a hard fluid pound. You want to minimize that. So that's a good thing. Uh, and we're, we're going to that all the time. It's kind of like running down the road. It's a real bumpy road. And your car is bouncing along, or your pickup. And uh, what you, first thing you want to do for a speed bump coming up, slow down. And that's what you want to do here, basically. Uh, uh, slowing the well down is the best thing. Keep the pump full, slow it down as slow as you can run it, the longest rod string, uh, the, the, excuse me, the, long, the longest surface stroke you can tolerate with your pumping unit. And uh, slow it down to keep the pump full, and that way you, you minimize the cycles. Everything lasts longer, efficiency goes up, you're still producing the well to capacity. But this is overdone. You see this a lot when you're over displacing wells. We get kind of greedy, don't we? We want to sell that oil, and we're not satisfied until we can see this condition going on. But you don't want to, you don't want to overdo it, because it can be detrimental on cost to operate. This is uh, something that happens on every pump. If it doesn't break for other reasons, it'll wear out, because you got rubbing of the plunger against the barrel. Of course, it's lubricated with oil and water, but it's still, it's moving up and down in that barrel, that plunger is, and it'll eventually wire. And also, you have two valves. You have what we call a standing valve and a trialing valve. Standing valves at the bottom, trialing valves in the plunger. Now, this right here is a worn standing valve. In other words, when, the, when you start letting off of the fluid load, you, you're speeding up gradually to do that, to start with, it's not uh, you've got leakages so much that it doesn't drop straight down. You've got to get it moving fast enough to get that fluid load off the pump. 
And then when you start slowing down, the leakage is taking over again, and it starts going back up. And so you get that funny looking shape there. That uh, what's that look like to you? You know, you can make all kind of stories about pump card shapes. Looks like a bowl, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, when you get the bowl shape, you got a standing valve problem. Now, here's the opposite, trailing valve. You're trying to pick up the fluid load. The leakage is more than the pump is displacing, going real slow. And so you, and as you, you know, as you, as the pumping unit is going up, it it starts slow and it speeds up, speeds up to a max in the middle of the stroke, and then it starts slowing down to the end of the stroke. And that's what you see here. You, you're speeding up faster and faster. You're picking up more and more of the fluid load. Eventually, you got it all, maybe. And uh, and then okay, you're producing a little fluid that way, that way. And now you're slowing down, and the leakage takes over again predominates and you start losing the fluid load before you get to the top of the stroke. Very simple diagnosis and, and you see this all the time. Now another thing that's not shown here is valve checks and that we don't have time to talk about all that but anybody that does dynamometer downhole cards we make uh, starts and stops with the pumping unit to do other measurements. So uh, I hope sometime we can talk about that. That's a, another addition to this kind of technology. I thank you for your time, and I hope I made a little sense here. And if you want to really get uh, into it, just start looking at these, and you'll, you'll see so many of them, it'll blow your mind, different varieties of these. It's really a challenge to diagnose wells. Thank you. Mm -hmm.